Okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, this. Okay, everybody, we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, just a few housekeeping items. There are copies of tonight's presentation in the back of the room for our in-person participants. Um, for our folks on Zoom, there are going to be PDFs dropped into the chat for you to have after tonight's meeting. Um, for best sound quality on Zoom, participants need to select either the English or Chinese channel on the bottom of your screen. And lastly, for our Q&A at the end, we are going to ask our participants in the room to please use the microphone we have up front if you're uh, participating in any Q&A. And for Zoom participants, please use the Q&A feature that is available on the bottom of your screen. We're going to do our best to get up to every question. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to ask our acting city manager, Mario Rueda, to step up to do an introduction. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Dale, our one uh, in-person participant. You get credit for, for actually showing up. I always uh, tell staff, we get a 90 just for showing up. So, um, but uh, tonight's an important night. It, uh, the identification of the important priority initiatives for our city uh, has become one of the most important first steps in the development of our budget. Um, thanks to the work of the mayor, uh, the city council, finance director Chung, we've uh, developed a process that uh, has re resulted in adopted budgets each year, including last year's budget, which was adopted well before the end of uh, the fiscal year. Uh, working with staff, uh, listening to the community, staff developed seven priority initiatives that we believe are important areas of interest for the city council to consider uh, as potential um, areas for funding. Uh, the purpose of this meeting is to provide the community with an opportunity to discuss these initiatives, share their own ideas, uh, seek, seek input from city staff that's either here in person or online, and to determine if there's any opposition to uh, any of these uh, initiatives as we uh, ask staff to prepare presentations for city council. Um, without uh, further ado, uh, I want to introduce our finance director who over the last several years working with the council, I, I think has done a, just an excellent job of building transparency and uh, increasing that confidence that uh, the city is actually being well run and well managed and he is certainly doing that. So uh, Paul Chung, our finance director, will walk you through these uh, priority initiatives. Thank you, Dale. <laughs> Great, thank you. Thank you, city manager. And uh, thank you, Dale, for joining us today and also members of uh, the community online as well. Tonight, um, I'll be providing an overview of the budget uh, just starting out with the baseline, our current fiscal year that's been adopted by the council. And then I'll also touch on what our future fiscal year 23-24 budget will look like. And at the end, we'll take some questions if there are any questions. So let me begin. Our budget really, everyone has a different definition of a budget. Budget is really a spending plan. The way I define the budget is a spending authority of the city to provide governmental services. And our municipal code states that the city manager uh, needs to adopt a budget by June 30th in order for us to provide the government services starting fiscal year uh, July 1st. Next slide, please. Where can we find our budget? Our budget avail is available online and um, it's on our city website. And if you go to finance department, you'll see it in under our one of our categories of reports, financial reports as well. Next slide, please. I am really proud to um, to acknowledge that we were uh, we we did receive uh, our budget as recognized by two of the largest uh, reputable public finance committees, one being CSMFO, the California Society of Municipal Finance Officers, and the GFOA, the Government 
Finance Officers Association of the United States and Canada. And the reason for this award, it's our fifth year consecutively that we, we've achieved this award. But the importance of that award is that, uh, number one, our budget is transparent. Number two, it's re easy to read and follow. And lastly, it's clear and concise. Uh, next slide, please. The budget really is a year-round process, but I would say the meat of the budget process really begins during January to the end of uh, May slash June when we adopt the budget. Currently, as we are in February, we are in the process of uh, drafting up the priority initiatives, the big initiatives for next year, how we want to fund the program for next year, and we want to touch on these various items, which I will present shortly. Uh, this whole process involves all facets of the organization from the city council, from the community members, and of course, city staff as well. Next slide. So let me just talk about the baseline, um, our current budget that was adopted. Our revenues overall uh, for this year was $36.8 million. Uh, that is slightly higher than previous years, and that's really because we had a one-time payment from the federal government in regards to covid expenditures and they were um, they funded that through what they call ARPA or the uh, American Rescue Plan and that money is just a one-time money so moving forward we won't see that money next slide please um, as you're aware our general fund majority of our general fund revenues comes from form of property taxes 69 to 70 percent 70 percent of that comes from property taxes and that actually helps me sleep well at night knowing the fact that it's really a predictable uh, source of revenue uh, other agencies such as arcadia when they heavily rely on sales tax it's hard to forecast especially during the last couple of years when covid was a big fiscal impact and yet here in san marino we our sales tax remains low but at the same time our property taxes remain stable we historically, we've, we've um, we received 4.5% increase in our property taxes. And I do forecast that to continue through the um, through next year as well. Next slide, please. On the expenditure side, our total expenditures for this year was $46.7 million. And we want to break that up into real two buckets of money here. One is the operating budget, which is where the government services side um, resides, and then and then the capital budget side, which our infrastructure gets funded. As we are a government agency providing services, our overall budget, 44% of that comprises of our personnel budget, and then 34% of that is funded for the prop uh, capital projects. You'll notice that debt service is 1%. Our city only holds one debt on our books. And next year will be the final year that this debt matures. And that was a um, pension obligation bond that was issued, I believe, in 2007. So that will be maturing next year. And that, that will be a savings to the city of half a million dollars starting not next year, but the following year, 20, uh, fiscal year 25-26. But next year will be the last payment. Next slide, please. On the expenditure side, these are the various departments that provide the services to San Marino. As you can see to your left uh, of the, the graph is where police and fire reside. As you can see, that's where the focus and where the community um, um, focuses on regards to public safety. Um, as you're aware, there's the public safety parcel tax that the voters do pass, and that helps fund the public safety for San Marino. Um, overall, for a balanced budget, means that you have a, a budget where revenues exceed or meet uh, expenditures. We've historically had a surplus in our budget uh, that ranged from $2 million to somewhere as upwards to $4 million. And in order for that surplus to continue, we want to have a baseline of adequate revenues um, over exceeding our expenditures. And historically, the city council uh, would transfer any surplus and fund future capital projects at the fiscal year end. Uh, regards to our capital improvement fund, our budget, it really comprises of two segments. One is the capital construction, where most of the infrastructure gets funded, such as our San Marino Center, and also our street work. And then there's the 
portion that's capital equipment focused, meaning mostly uh, vehicles and some of the smaller uh, equipment related capital items. Anything that exceeds $5,000, we budget in our capital equipment. Um, as you're aware, we do have large capital projects coming online. Uh, San Marino Center progresses as we speak. But we also have uh, large infrastructure projects such as wastewater and stormwater that is near on our horizon in the coming years that we need to consider that will be a large investment from the community. If you go to the next slide, please. Areas of focus for next year. These are the items I will be focusing on. Um, as you're aware, inflation continues to be high. Uh, we've been seeing some plateauing of inflation, but it is hard to predict where we will be next year. So my forecast is that we're looking at about three to 10% increase in inflation. There is whispers of a possible recession that might impact this, uh, San Marino next year. So I am um, making sure uh, to listen in to see what our impact will be if a recession does hit. We are also going into labor negotiations next year. The council has um, adopted a two-year uh, negotiations, but yet that term is gonna come up during next year's budget. So that would need to be considered. Also our revenues, even though it's it, per se, it's not slowing down, our, rev, our expenditures are increasing. Our pension costs are, even though we are tied to CalPERS, the pension costs continue to rise and it will rise for at least for the next um, eight to 10 more years. As I mentioned, there are some large capital projects that we need to finish. San Marino Center in the coming months will be finalized, but also we have our stormwater and wastewater. As I mentioned, these are large infrastructure projects that, that the city needs to consider and uh, work on in the coming years. And then the lastly will be the priority initiatives, the initiatives that the city manager mentioned, big projects for next year that we need to consider. And in my next couple of slides, I'll be covering the seven priority initiatives that we will be proposing to our city council and the community. The first one is our vacant home initiative. Um, as we are aware that the ballot, um, it did not pass the ballot back in August. It was on the ballot, but it didn't pass the measure, sorry. Uh, it did not receive the two thirds vote, but um, there was quite a bit of voters, 50% uh, or over that was that voted for a measure for vacant homes. So staff is considering a, a program to see what will be effective program that works for San Marino for the various vacant homes. Uh, next slide, please. Economic development is also an area of focus for uh, staff next year, as we have two business districts. One is thriving, but the other is still in the works. And we wanna put some resources to hopefully attract more businesses, but also attract customers as well. Next slide. Stoneman, uh, we are looking into a path forward regards to Stoneman as community uh, services department moves over to our new San Marino Center next year. Stoneman is a big question mark and it's, a, it's, a, it's an area of focus for the community, also focus for the mayor and city manager. So we are trying to gather resources and trying to figure out what's the path forward for Stoneman as well. Next slide. Traffic improvement initiatives. There's three uh, big initiatives in regards to traffic. First one is to develop a residential streets traffic management policy. Next item is city citywide various traffic calming and safety improvement. And lastly, staff will be drafting a budget regarding community requested traffic improvements so that there will be an opportunity if a resident um, needs or wants to inquire a need for a, for instance, a stop sign. We have an avenue to potentially do a study and implement those kind of needs throughout the, the city. Next slide, please. Um, city facilities security initiative. Currently, the city doesn't have a integrated security system. Um, so we are looking into a way to protect our city assets, but also provide security for our patrons that come in and out of the buildings, but also for staff security as well. Next item, please. Uh, also, the next initiative is rebuild sense of community. Um, there's three um, programs that community services is, is offering for next year. You know, one is the quarterly dance parties at the community center. Another item is youth rock band competition at Lacey Park. And lastly, a multicultural summer concert during the summer uh, concert series. And then the last initiative is our 
enhance public safety program. Um, as unfortunately as the the community has been seeing more crime, the um, the department is really looking into ways to reduce crime and increase the safety in San Marino. Um, we're looking to come back to the council on February 24th to provide additional detail in regards to what programs we want to propose to the council and the community, and also to put a number behind how much this potentially will cost for the city. Last slide I have for you tonight is just important dates. Um, currently, we have our city's website that has a dedicated page to get community input. So please um, go to that website and, and you have an opportunity to take a survey and provide any comments and feedback regards to our initiatives that's proposed there. That is actually closing on February 10th, so that will be this Friday. So please visit that website and please provide some comments. Our pride initiatives, as I mentioned, is coming back to council on February 24th. That's when we will be proposing a budget line item detail behind the priority initiatives so that the council could consider this and add it to next year's budget. A couple of dates coming up are budget study sessions. Our CIP budget study session will be covered during March 24th and 31st. Our operating budget will be covered during April 21st and 28th. And lastly, after um, our budget study session concludes, I'll be drafting the budget and the city manager and I will be coming back to the council for their approval and, and of the uh, budget for next year on May 26. That concludes my presentation and the city manager and I are available for any questions. Thank you. Thank you, Director Chung. Uh, I wanna remind everybody on Zoom that if you have a question, you can uh, send it in in the Q&A box at the bottom. I am not seeing any questions in person at the moment, but we'll give everyone online just a minute. I do also want to plug that at the end of the Zoom webinar today, uh, you will be invited to take that survey that Director Chung mentioned in his presentation. Um, the link should be uh, directly linked to the end of the webinar. And if not, you can visit cityofsanmarino.org and find that uh, link for that survey. I am not seeing any questions. City Manager Rueda, do you have anything else? I do not, Gail. Well, just those two things I mentioned earlier about the pension, about stolen, if maybe you could talk a little bit more about those. Okay, so we have a question in the room about um, pension. I'll start with pension obligation first. Yes, yeah, so uh, regards to pension, we do forecast uh, about a it's a little early, but 12% increase in, in pension costs. It really, we're handcuffed by CalPERS, as you're aware. Um, CalPERS, last year, their returns weren't good. Um, they, I believe last time we, we looked at it, it was a negative 22% decrease in their uh, investments. But if you look at it in the long term, meaning even previous year to that, they actually had a return of 28%. So it was actually pretty good. This year, we saw a, a pension cost, at least on our unfunded liability, slightly decrease, and we do expect that next year. But overall, as pension costs increase, um, we do expect that um, fiscal impact to continue at least for the next couple of years, at least for eight years, until the pension reform, which is called PEPRA, when the new hires come in as the PEPRA formula, which costs the city less money. We will see that benefit, but most likely we won't see that till probably years eight to 10 years into the future. You're probably about 12%. Or... We're, we're, I'm for, forecasting about 12% increase, yes. Question. Yes. And the other question was regarding the plan for Stoneman. So Dale, um, so Dale thank you for the question. Um, so the um, Stoneman path forward, it's one of the areas that uh, we at city staff hear about frequently. The proposal was actually centered around uh, determining a path forward for the building property based on the city council and the community's vision, long-term vision. The costs, uh, the costs that were initially uh, contemplated were for consultant study, 
uh, to determine what potential uses of the property and the, and the uh, facility, and then what would be the community engagement process? What would we do to, to actually get the true flavor and, uh, uh, of the community um, as we uh, look to, uh, to develop or uh, a proposal for the Stoneman property? So just a little bit about the Stoneman property. Um, it is a historical uh, landmark designated by the city uh, back in 1987. It's listed under the uh, California Register of Historic Resources. It's eligible for the National Register of Historic Places. Um, although there was a number of scab bonds and additions to the property, those were not considered historically uh, significant. The city has invested in several uh, studies to date. Uh, master plan study in 2007, uh, historic resources assessment 2015, uh, property appraisal, ADA assessment 2019, and then a facility condition assessment 2022. Um, there was also a uh, recreation um, uh, survey that was sent out uh, during the re-envisioning process, and it did uh, contain a question about the uh, future use of the San Marino Center and uh, overwhelmingly, the results were that the city should keep it, repair it, and use it. Although that was prior to the San Marino Center uh, Community Center project. So the landscape has changed a bit, and the council recognized um, the council recognized that and asked questions um, pertaining to what would this study actually entail. The consultant that uh, that was. Uh, contemplated. Um, they were, and they were told uh, potential uses and community outreach. Uh, I think we received sufficient direction flavor from the council that potentially the study could be done in-house uh, to get uh, 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 that sense of direction from the community and uh, information for the council uh, with the new information that we do have a community center that's uh, coming online here uh, this year. Um, so that uh, that was the initial path forward. I think after that, we'd still have to look at a, a consultant that could tell us, okay, based on community's input, here are the things that you could actually do here, given its historic uh, nature, given the size of the property, um, and what, uh, uh, what uh, ventures could be entertained um, so that will likely be the first path forward will be a community assessment with uh, current conditions and um, a new center coming online that uh, may um, may move residents to a different place uh, that was previously um, sought after by residents. So uh, any questions, Dale? Um, so it's a first step in moving that, hopefully that, process forward of what do we do with this property? Any other questions online, Nicole? Uh, we do have a question that comes up quite frequently. It's semi-budget related, semi-procurement related. Uh, so the council does grant budget for a consultant. How are those consultants selected? What is the process that the city does to uh, basically procure services? Do you want to take that, Paul? Yes, uh, great question. Uh, so the process is that our purchasing code requires anything above $30,000, you would have to do a formal bid. A formal bid requires to receive at least minimum of three bids. And depending upon if it's a service, uh, we the code states that it doesn't have to be the lowest bidder, it just has to be a combination of best service and price. Uh, but if it's a good and actual tangible product, uh, product, it is the code does state that it needs to be the lowest bidder. Anything under thirty thousand has its own uh, requirements. If it's under thirty, between a thousand to thirty thousand, it's an informal bid, and then anything below thousand does not require a bid. Hopefully, that answers the question. I think that covers it. Great. I will give folks on Zoom just a minute more to submit any last Q&As that they have.
All right, I'm not seeing any Q&As. I would like to thank everybody for their time tonight. Thank you, Director Chung. Thank you, Acting City Manager Rueda. Uh, that will conclude our presentation for the evening. And I uh, will make one more plug. Make sure you uh, give your feedback for our priority initiative service.